Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wood and Senior here. And I pray that you're doing well. I pray that you had a very Merry Christmas and that you celebrated Jesus Christ and that you are currently enjoying the Christmas holidays. And I want to also say to you, here we are in the last Thursday of 2023. The new year is around the corner and I'm praying that you have a happy new year. I'm praying that God bless you, bless you, bless me, that the Lord keep us throughout 2024 should the Lord delay his coming and allow us to live. But for now, we're still in 2023, the last Thursday of 2023. Can you believe it? This year has passed and it has passed quickly and God has watched over us and kept us. And, you know, uh, there were times during the year where we would all wonder as to whether we would get here or not. And lo and behold, we're here. The 4th of July has come and passed. Easter and all of the holidays and the different things have come and passed. Thanksgiving has come and has passed. And uh, oh my, here we are now. Here we are now. Having celebrated the birth of Christ, Christmas is in the rearview mirror and we're getting ready for 2024. Oh my, I hope that you are as grateful as I am to be alive uh, in the land of the living and serving the Lord uh, in a day like today. Now, I want to tell you something. I want to invite you. I want to invite you to take to share in something big that's going to take place today. Today at 12 noon, my wife, uh, First Lady Pamela Wooden, conducts a noonday prayer. And it's generally an online prayer where she's praying and the saints chime in and pray with her. And it's a move of God every Thursday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. Well, today it's going to be different from 12 noon to 1 p.m. First Lady Pamela Wooden, uh, Evangelist Missionary Vonetta Wilborn, Missionary Latanya Liston B, praise the Lord, and many other powerful prayer warriors will be joining my wife, First Lady Pamela Wooden, here live in the sanctuary of the upper room having a live noonday prayer. So we want to invite all of you to come out and be a part of the live prayer. Uh, the, the, the ladies are going to be seeking the Lord and getting us ready for the revival that is going to take place starting tonight. Starting tonight, tonight, tomorrow night through Sunday, and we will be here Sunday night bringing in the new year. There can be no greater way to begin the, the, the revival than through prayer. And uh, First Lady and these mighty women of God, these prayer warriors are going to be here in the sanctuary of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. This prayer can also be heard virtually on Zoom for those who cannot attend in person. Listen, join us, be a part of it. All are welcome to join us, to stop in at Noonday Prayer in our beautiful sanctuary at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ and pray. Amen. So we're excited about that. And we need prayer. We need all the prayer that we can get uh, in these last and evil days because the world, my friends, uh, is getting uh, crazier and crazier, more and more evil, more and more wicked as men reject God's truth. Now you talk about rejecting God's truth. I guess, I guess the Catholics, uh, hey, I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it. They're folding. You Catholics out there, fight for your, fight for your religion, fight for your faith. Uh, I, you know, there are some disagreements that Catholics and Protestants have, but th this is not one of them. And I want to say to the Catholics, you need to stand up and let your voice be heard because the Pope has gotten out of line. 
He thinks, I guess he thinks being the Pope makes him equal with God. And I don't know, maybe there are some Catholics who believe that. Maybe some believe that he's in the place of God, but I don't believe there's anybody in the stead nor the place of the God of the Bible, except the God of the Bible. And you cannot, Mr. Pope, you cannot curse that which God has blessed, and you cannot bless Sir, that which God has cursed. I guess the Pope, uh, in his uh, findings, uh, uh, he's saying the new document makes clear that the church still views marriage as uh, the holy union of a man and a woman. However, blessings for same-sex couples, couples can now be offered under some circumstances, so long as they are non-liturgical and not used as part of civil union ceremonies. Now, other words, other words translated in the Greek, we're caving. Now, you can't under any circumstances as a man of God, as a woman of God, in the name of Jesus, you cannot use the word bless anything that God has cursed. So I wonder if, if the Pope has ever read uh, Numbers, uh, chapter number 23, uh, where the, the, uh, the prophet uh, uh, Balaam uh, says, how can I curse whom God have not cursed? And how shall I defy whom the Lord have not defied? See, he knew that he cannot curse people that God has not cursed, and he cannot bless that which God has not blessed. He, he goes on to say, when he talks about God, he says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Hath he not said, shall he not do it? Or hath he not spoken? Shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandments to bless, and he hath blessed. I cannot reverse it. Other words, I have received a commandment to bless Israel. Ba the the uh, Balak wanted the prophet to to curse um, uh, uh, Israel, and he said, "I can't do it. God has blessed him." I can't do it. And here we are today. The Catholic Church is now trying to bless that which God has cursed. And uh, I want to say to uh, the body of Christ, uh, it's time to pray because, because we're caving. And, and to, to our neighbors uh, in the north, uh, Canada, you need a leader. Because Justin Trudeau has lost his mind. Tampons now offered in Canadian Parliament men's bathrooms under Trudeau's new policy. Tampons and sanitary napkins are now available in men's bathrooms at the Canadian Parliament under a new policy from Prime Minister Justin Trudeau that requires all federally regulated employers, including airports, military bases, uh, airports and military bases to offer free menstrual products to all washrooms, regardless of gender, noted on the door. <laughs> so what does, what do God, what do, what does a men's room, a men's room need with uh, a feminine products? News of the policy change spread quickly last week after former Canadian conservative Senator Linda Frum, I hope I said her name right, F-R-U-M, posted a photo of a basket offering free pads and tampons inside a men's bathroom for transgender members of the parliament. See, you see what happens when you, when you, when you go along with the lie, when you, <laughs> when you pretend that a woman can turn herself into a man by putting on a guy's suit and uh, uh, having an Adam, Adam's apple, you know, having some facial reconstruction surgery, I don't know, taking some uh, testosterone, uh, wearing a, a, a bra that, that hides her boobs, whatever. But look, uh, down below, uh, every month, still a woman. You know why? Because you are a woman. 
You are a woman. This is ridiculous. This is this is mind bendingly crazy. So uh, she could walk. She can walk in a, man, a man's room in the men's room. Gary with a beard and a suit and a heavy voice and walk in and uh, go and get in the stall of the men's room and use a tampon. The world has lost its mind. I've said before, when you reject God's truth, it's amazing what you are willing to accept. The Bible says they rejected God's truth and began to worship birds, four-footed beasts, and all kinds of animals. Men have lost their minds. Look at this. This article goes on to say, and I'm going to leave it alone. It says, back in the day when only women menstruated, we had to pay for our own products. But now that men menstruate too, these products, uh, as of this week, are mandated to be free in all men's washrooms in all federal workplaces, including uh, uh, Parliament Hill. Uh, the, the women ought to be uh, upset. The, the, the women's movement, the feminists ought to be upset because if you are a woman who pretends to be a man in Canada, the the government will pay for your tampons and feminine feminine nap, napkins. But if you're a woman who's a woman and, and a woman being a woman, just a woman, you know, you're a woman because God made you a woman. You were born a girl, you're born a baby girl, grew up to be a little girl, grew up to be a big girl. They grew to be a grown woman and you're a woman. And you you deal with those things that pertain to women. You got to buy yours. But if you are a woman who wants to be a man and pretend that he's a guy, that she's a guy and, and want to look like a guy and act like a guy, but you're not a guy. The government will give you tampons. Do you see how ludicrous this is, my friends? This is why we have to stay on the wall. We have to get ready and get geared up for 2024. I want to read this to you, and I'm going to I'm going to bring this to a close. But Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, chapter number 43, verse 18 and 19 says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God is promising that he's going to do a new thing. God is promising that he's going to fix some things and change some things and he'll do it in a way where you can't miss it. So I want to encourage you, even with all this craziness that's going on, and there's so many other things I could, could mention today, but uh, I'm going to stop right here for now. But I want you to know that with all of this, I just say that to fire you up. I want you to know that the God of the Bible is alive and well. He's moving by his spirit. He's in control. He rules and he super rules. Praise God. He's got us. He knows exactly what's going to happen. He knows how to keep us. He knows how to bring us up, out, and through. And all we got to do is keep our hands in the hands of the God of the Bible. Now, I want you to join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ because our end of the year revival is about to begin. And I'm telling you right now, God has armed me with a word from the Lord. And I'm excited about preaching the word of God to you tonight. And uh, tomorrow night, I want you to come back. I want you to come back because uh, Pastor Al Cleveland will be here on Friday night preaching the word of the Lord with power and authority. And uh, I'm excited about him. He and I have been talking and we're excited about what God is going to do on Friday night, my friends, right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And then on Sunday, December the 31st, New Year's Eve, Oh, we're having our 11 a.m. service, the one service this coming Sunday. And uh, our special guest will be Prophetess Janet Floyd from Monroe, Louisiana. She's going to be here. 
ministering the word of the Lord. Yours truly, I will be here. And then she and I would tag team on Sunday night, New Year's Eve, starting at 8 p.m. And we're going to bring in the new year if it's the Lord's will and he allow us to live and delay his coming. Preaching the word of the Lord and I'm going to reveal to you the word that God has given me for 2024. So as you can see, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm fired up. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I have so much to be thankful for. I thank God for my wife. I thank God for my family. I thank God for the wonderful jurisdiction that the Lord has blessed me to preside over. I thank God for my supervisor, Mother Beverly DeJanae, and all of the great officers of North Carolina Third. Thank God for the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, the greatest church in the world as far as I'm concerned. I thank God for the Church of God in Christ and for the leadership of our church, our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Shedd. Thank God for our uh, uh, national mother, Mother Barbara cool Lewis. God bless that woman of God. And my friends, I thank God for every one of you. I thank God that I, my mother is yet in the land of the living. I thank God for my friends out there. And I thank God for my enemies. I thank God for Jesus who laid the foundation. And I thank God for Jesus who opened up the way. I thank God. I thank God for every prayer warrior who have prayed for me. I thank God for every battle, for every mountain, for every hill, for every uh, high and for every low. Oh my, God has been good. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. And I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. So I want you to join me right here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for preaching and Bible study. I'm going to do a little bit of both if it's the Lord's will. I'm fired up to preach And you know, I'm always fired up to teach the word of the Lord. You know, I want to give it away what I want to teach tonight because see my sermon uh, is simmering, is simmering. And if it's the Lord's will, if it's the Lord's will, uh, I'm going to come to a boiling point tonight and God is going to move in a mighty way and the Lord is going to bless. And then tomorrow night, oh my, batting down the hatches. Let's get ready for uh, uh, Al Cleveland, oh, evangelist Al Cleveland, as he brings the word of the Lord to us. Now, I I need to calm down. That's what I need to do. Gary, I need to calm down. I just need to calm down. (sighs) I love you guys. I thank God for you. Thank you for being with me and joining me for these uh, uh, advertisements and these clips and these invites, you you have no idea how you have uh, strengthened me, hardened me. You've strengthened my my resolve. You have encouraged this preacher. So many of the kind comments and things. Uh, I listen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And for those comments that haven't been as kind and as as charitable, keep them coming. <laughs> because we love you. And all we want people to do, we want people to know the God of the Bible. We want people to experience having Jesus living on the inside of them. We want people to know that the God of the Bible is a righteous God and a holy God. He's merciful, but he is calling us to holiness. He does expect us to walk right, to do right, to live right. And what a, re- what a joy it is to serve him and to walk upright to know him, to have him on the inside, to be filled with the spirit of the Lord, to live a sanctified life, to to literally watch yourself improve every day. We're all works in progress. We're all works in progress. So we're all working and getting better day by day. And I thank God that the Lord is blessing me and the Lord is blessing you and he's improving us day by day. So I'm going to, while I'm calm, I feel it trying to take off again. While I'm calm, I'm going to sign off. But we'll see you tonight, right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. God bless you. Thanks for watching.